the number one in the world is facing off against the number three. What I've got for you today, I did a very similar intro recently for Serral versus Maru. Not quite the same series. What I've got for you today is a Terran versus Zerg, where in game number one, we find ourselves on the map a Royal Blood, and spawning right here in the top right hand corner, playing with the red Zerg drones. As you may have already guessed, we have none other than Serral, who's opening up with, I guess, an extractor tricked hatchery on the low ground? Yeah. Interesting. Okay, his opponent, though, in this particular series, playing right here with the Blue Terran SCVs from South Korea, much like Maru, but not quite the same player. We're looking inside of the main of Cure. Alrighty, so Cure versus Serral. This is from the WTO, and from what I understand, this should be a very high level match. So I'm excited to find out exactly what ended up going down between these two players. I've mentioned it before, and I'll say it again Cure has been looking incredibly good lately. In some of the matchups, in particular in Terran versus Protoss, I think he's the very best Terran player in the world. I would say overall, Maru is a little bit stronger in Terran versus Zerg, but Cure is certainly not going to be an easy opponent here for Serral whatsoever. Then again, it's Serral, and every single time I cast Serral, there's always somebody in the comment section that's complaining about balance, because the man is just that good. <laughs> <laughs> like, in general, the StarCraft community, we discuss a lot of balance, okay? People love talking about balance, but there's always somebody in the comment section below the Serral videos that's like, Okay, Zerk, how do you even beat it? It seems unbeatable, this guy. How in the world would you even stop it? If somebody plays perfect, Zerk seems unstoppable. And maybe that's true. Yeah, there's definitely, I, I think, ultimately, the, you know, unit compositions that Zerk can make, especially with all of the spellcasters controlled perfectly, it does look pretty unbeatable, I'm not gonna lie, but... The thing is, nobody really gets close, and Serral is the only one who, you know, plays StarCraft 2 at that level. So, anyways, I haven't seen these games, but I do favor Serral in basically any series of Terran vs. Zerg that I've ever casted, just because the man, generally speaking, doesn't really lose that much. Although, I would say 2018 or so is when Serral looked absolutely unbeatable. So that's quite a few years ago already at this point. Obviously, Serral's still looking incredibly good, but he's more mortal these days than he was five years ago. <laughs> Take that for what it's worth. They did quite literally balance the game around him, though. I mean, if the Queens and all the other units were still quite the same way as they were in 2018, I think Serral would probably be dominating. All right, anyway, he's, he's still obviously dominating pretty much every single series that he plays. But anyways, we've got ourselves a double wreck start right here from Cure. This is a build order that we don't really see all too often on the European server, but it's very popular in Korea right now. Serral, however, has decided to go for the 15 hatchery rather than the 16 hatch first. The difference is that you actually make this hatchery before producing the first overlord, and you make it at one drone count less. The grand result is that you get your queens about a dozen seconds out earlier. So you get the queens going a bit earlier on into the game, which can be very handy, especially when you... Well, he actually didn't start up link speed. This is a little bit funky. Anyways, especially when you're just playing against a single reaper, because the queens alone are going to be just fine. So only just now is when Zerklings are coming up. The problem is, there's no link speed fired up yet for Serral. He's going three-minute lair. Okay. No third hatchery anywhere to be seen yet either. Where in the world are we taking this game, Serral? I'm not exactly sure. Serral not doing side quests, okay? He's he's, <laughs> he's he's won everything. Okay, it's a quick road horn. Interesting. He's not doing side quests. He's already completed the main quest of StarCraft 2 many years ago, so apparently we're now just uh, doing some other stuff. I think at this point, Cure is wondering as well, like, what in the world's going on in this match? So he's seen the timing of the lair, but he hasn't seen a road horn. He hasn't seen a bailing nest. He hasn't seen a... You know, a spire or extra gases or any indicator of a spire. It would be kind of nice for him to find out what he's playing against. I actually believe that this is just a pretty defensive opener from Serral. So he skipped the early game Zerklings. He skipped the early game Zerkling speed. He skipped the third base until just now. And we're just going to make a bunch of roaches for defense. I mean, I don't think we have really a setup here to go for a big push. Maybe with roach speed finishing. Yeah, but. Normally, if you go for an attack with Roaches, you'd also line it up with an Evolution Chamber, and that's also nowhere to be seen. Okay. Now, I have been keeping track of what Terran is doing, because I've been talking about Zerker for a while. Terran's doing, uh, yeah, everything normal. We've got a triple CC start with a 1-1 build, or I guess a 2-1-1 build. Um, nothing all too uncommon here. Of course, this is something we see most of the time from Terran players these days, especially the Korean Terrans. And Serral right now is going to take a little peek as well. Like, yo, bro. Nice Stimpak you got going on over there. I guess this Overlord may pay for this information with its life, which is a little bit sad, but at the very least, Serral knows what he's playing against. 
All right, so right from the get-go, though, this Zerk playstyle that we see is a little bit strange. And generally speaking, whenever we have a strange build, I'm always leaning towards the guy who's playing quote-unquote standard, quote-unquote normal. So what Cure is doing here is very normal. This is something we've seen a lot lately. Usually, whenever players get creative, other than, I guess, Serol and Maru and a, top of, uh, a couple of the other top-level guys, um, I'm, I'm a little hesitant, yeah. But I guess we'll see. So, there's seven roaches available. This may very well be the new heart counter, right? That Serol has come up with against this Triple Reaper start. If he's putting you on a Triple Reaper opener, which is basically, again, what all the Korean Terrans are doing right now, this is, I guess, a viable alternative. Yeah, it's just a... It's a build where, like, your economy is... <laughs> it's funny. So you sacrifice a little bit of your early game economy here and there. So your hatchery, for example, is a little bit earlier. That, that costs you a bit of money here and there. And your third base is later, too. But his worker count right now is tremendous. And he did, of course, cut the link speed, as well as any zircling production earlier on, too. The thing is... Links are very helpful because you can turn them into Bane Links later on as well. And that is not a unit that Serral's going for. As a matter of fact, he's going straight for the gold base here at the six minute mark. Interesting. All right. Anyways, nice little bit of micro right there on that roach as well. So far, Cure has been deflected. Yeah, you know those Dragon Ball Z episodes where they're shouting at each other the entire time and in the end, they're just throwing punches, but no one really gets hit. That, that's kind of this game so far. Both of them are like, ooh, ooh, ah. They're, they're just trying their very best to deflect every single blow. And so far, they've, they've managed that perfectly. So who, in the end, is ahead here? I would say this is a pretty even game. My main concern here is that Roach Ravager playstyle. Ro Ro Roach Ravager is nice. But ultimately, if the game goes to distance, you really do need Bane Links. Because Ghosts, I mean, really, their only, their, their only proper counter is Ling Bane styles, and generally speaking, that's one of the reasons why Zergs go straight into Ling Bane. Not only is it nice in the earlier stages of the game, because obviously Roach Speed, or sorry, Bane Link Speed is super helpful against most of the mid-game timing attacks, but it's also very helpful to have those melee upgrades later on into the game. So I'm curious to see if Serral's gonna go into plus one melee with like plus two armor here? If he's gonna do anything but make Roaches? All right, well, he's getting golden minerals right now. Now he fires up plus two missile. Okay, so he's sticking around on this for a lot longer. Maybe he'll go Hydras into Lurkers here. Terrans have been delaying their ghost transitions lately, so there might be a chance for Serral to hit a timing. Or he can just hit his opponent in the face right now. This is a delayed 1-1 one, one attack. I actually don't think this was meant to kill the Terran player here necessarily. I think this is mostly just Serral testing the waters. And he's noticing, wait a second, you seem very vulnerable right now. Yeah, so maybe this is a suboptimal play, maybe it isn't. But at the very least, Cure is a little bit confused as to what he needs to do against this. His siege tank positions are not quite as clean as they could be. I think that's actually what Serral has figured out. Yeah, he's got a little change tank over there next to the siege tank, so he must have realized, you know what? If that's where your siege tanks are, I can just poke up to watch your third and deny it. This is those SCVs from the third base running away. Serral grabbing the income advantage despite losing a bunch of drones. Is he gonna jump this? This seems a little bit overly aggressive. Nice little pickup on that tank as well, by the way. I do really love that. Yeah, those tanks there in the back, they're nice and tucked away. Gonna be difficult for the Zerg player to reach. Okay. I'm assuming this is gonna be a Hydra then here now, together with a Hive. Cure really needs to double down on his siege tank production. I wouldn't mind seeing that second factory already, but... Yeah, at this point, he's heavily oversaturated his natural because he's a little bit concerned about sending those workers over once again. So, we're actually going for a hive together with a bailing nest. All right, Serral. You know what? That little mention about side quests only, it, it really does kind of feel like that, huh? <laughs> when, when the game becomes too easy and you don't want to deal with guys like Cure anymore in a serious manner. No, I'm sure he's playing this seriously, but this build order really does not see him as smooth as the conventional Zerg build. That doesn't mean that it's bad. I'm sure it's not. I'm sure Cyril's got a lot of practice with this strategy. But it certainly is throwing a curveball right here at the opponent. All right, so there's the bailing speed starter, though. I wonder if he could have gone for a third evolution chamber. I think it probably would have been an option. Okay, well, eventually, though, Terran is going to max out. And this Terran army is going to be significantly more powerful than the Zerg. The thing is, though, Serral's already got so much money in the bank that even if he loses these units, he can replace them. Plus two, plus two is done at this point. He's maxed out. And he's just gonna go for a big attack. I mean, that's a bit of a roach bloodbath right over there, though. 
not quite ideal, but the Terran economy here has been uh, hindered for a very long time. Yeah, Kira just doesn't have that much money in the bank. Sero remaxes. 46 additional Zorkings are coming up. Vipers are coming up. We're going melee upgrades right now, too. There's a little drop over here, but reinforcing roaches are taking care of that. Yeah, you know what? That one guy in the comment section always complains about balance whenever Cyril's playing. Oh, I always skip ahead to the end of the video to see if Cyril wins. If he wins, I'm not watching it. That guy? You may be onto something, man. This does look pretty broken. <laughs> now, look, I don't feed it. No, 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 no. I'm not gonna feed it. Seriously, though, this does seem like a... Uh, oh my god, we're going ultras? Really, Cyril? Cyril's just having some fun now. He's not gonna show his best strategies. To somebody like Cure, the number three in the world? Nuh-uh. If your name isn't Maru or Clem, you're not getting the full Serral treatment. No, this really does feel like Serral is not taking this game as seriously as some of the others. Although I'm sure that he is. It just feels like his strategy is like, eh, I kind of feel like a bailing nest right now. What about an Ultra Cavern? Mmm, love that. Alright. Overlord speed? Sure, why not? Anyways, Darren has been self-contained. Oh, oh no, he just unseats his tanks. Okay, he should be okay. Blinding Cloud! Oh no, the Blinding Cloud just caused those Marines to run into the Banelings. Not quite ideal. I think what Cure's best strategy here is, is to go for one big shove. So he's currently sitting on only five barracks. I mean, he's running out of money, I suppose. He's going for a second factory right now, but that one's very late. He doesn't really have a fourth command center here. He doesn't have... Yeah, he needs to go for one big push, I think, but 3-3 three, three is not quite lined up. Normally, you go for that big attack with 2-2 two, two finished. Now he's playing against Zerk with Baneling Speed as well. That creep spread has been completely uncontested throughout this game, it feels like. A couple of nice Biles, shutting down the siege tanks. And now the Ultras are coming. Drones apparently are just evacuating. <laughs> that almost feels like several... <laughs> Did he just try to bile his own units? I'm not sure. Anyways, that feels like him rubbing salt in the wood there. Beautiful game, though. Ay, 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 ay. Yeah, so those drones have just transferred to a safer location to mine. Still, this Terran army cannot be underestimated. It's a scary amount of units, and now the siege tanks are coming out two, to t two at a time. Liberators are coming out. Cure is gonna be able to snipe that hatchery here, which is pretty sweet. In a game like this, though, on three bases... Terran really doesn't have an answer against Ultras. Ultras are considered quite a weak unit overall in this matchup, but there is a time and place for it. With Chitinous Plating, with plus three armor, and against a Marine-based army, Ultras actually are insanely good. So obviously the Queens will need to throw up some transfuses and stuff. I think this Ultra actually is stuck behind a bunch of Morphing Banelings, so that's a little bit awkward. He's going to be joining in the fray later on, but does Serral even really need it? It's just Marines here, right? Yeah, it's just Marines and a couple of tanks, and... Maybe a few Vikings, and they're gonna be nice against those, uh, those Vipers, but... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. GG is cold. Serral absolutely dominates game number one. Dragon Scales, game number two in this best of three series. Are we once again gonna go for the low ground cure? I guess so. Yep. We're once again gonna go, I think, for the double wreck start. Maybe that Roach Opener, though, that Serral went for, maybe that's specifically designed against these Korean Terrans. So I've talked about it quite a bit. This Double Rex Opener with the Triple Reaper start, it's very powerful when Zerg is a little unprepared, when they don't really know exactly what to do. And obviously the follow-ups that come after the Double Rex start, they're a little difficult to read. Initially, it was just going to be like a, almost like a 16 Marine-esque opener with two barracks, one factory, one starport, and then two Medifex. But lately, we've been seeing Hellion play into Liberators. We've even seen Banshee follow-ups too. I've seen a Battlecruiser game after Triple Reaper. There's a lot of variety, right? But all of those attacks, they do hit a little bit later. And because of that, Zerk is just a little caught off guard. The thing is, this build has now been around for a couple months. And Zerk players definitely have been putting in their practice hours. They certainly have been trying to figure out exactly what the best approach is. And I've seen a variety of options. I've seen a lot of Zerg players opting to go for a quick link speed, right? And then delaying the third base ever so slightly, the strategy that Serral most of the time plays. Haven't quite yet seen the two base opener into quick roaches into a whole lot of nothing there for a while until we get 2-2 two -two done and then we go for a soft contain strat. I mean, that didn't really feel like something that was prepared, but mostly like a vulnerability that Serral must have spotted in his opponent's base defense. But anyways, 
I wonder if this build is still going to be played in like six months from now. You know what I mean? From what I understand, Bjorn is the guy who came up with it. He said at the time when he first started playing it, this is what we will see as a standard build very soon. And it turns out he was indeed right. But none of the Europeans play it. And that's, that's what really, I, I don't know, I can't quite wrap my head around that. Like, if it really is so good, if, if Maru plays it, Gumiho, Byun, Kyur, like, if all the top-level uh, Terrans from Korea play this strategy as, like, their go-to, but none of the European Terrans, like, for example, Clem and Hero Marine and Spirit, like, none of them play the Double Rex opener, is it actually good? Now, maybe I'm biased, because I also live in the beautiful country of Europe, but I'm inclined to imagine that... It's probably not that, not that great. It's probably like a, uh, it's a face mom. Yeah, that's what it is. I think it'll probably be something that we won't see too much in a couple months from now, but I'm happy to be wrong. This time around, we've got a much more normal, conventional start right here for Serral. So it's a triple hatchery into link speed. And the third Reaper is gonna join up very soon as well. And it's gonna be annoying. So far, only a single Zorkling has gone down. We did see the Council as well. Not really a game where you can try and target down the Hatchery anymore, but the Creep has been delayed a little bit, right? And this is just gonna be a little bit different now compared to the previous one. I think this will be a lot more conventional. Nice defense, though, by Serral. Don't you ever play this build against me again, Serral said. I would like to see this in a biography one day. What was the biography called again from Serral? What did I say in the previous cast? A concave of spore crawlers or something? I think that's a good name for a biography. Anyways, I would like Serral to be portrayed as the super villain of StarCraft, even though he's a super nice guy. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you ever play this double Rex opener against me ever again. Or I'll smack you with roaches. Anyways, triple CC beginning here as well for Cure. Factory coming up. Well, done already, but the reactor on the factory is coming up. And the starport right now is also building. We're gonna go into the Stimpak research. And we'll have to see exactly what this follow-up here is going to be from Kyr. Are we gonna be going for Metavex? Are we gonna go for a bunch of Hellions? Judging here by the timing, I think we're gonna see a couple Hellions, but... You could certainly go for the Switcheroo and just go for an attack a little bit later. This is where things become a little bit trickier, though, for Serral. So he did scout just now exactly what's going on, but, like, what was going on is a completely normal start. Are we gonna go Liberator? Yeah. Okay, so this is the style that we've been seeing quite a bit. It's difficult for the Zerg to scout exactly what's going on, so the fact that Serral actually has an Overlord here that isn't being shot at by a Marine is kind of insane. Here, you can literally see it. Okay. <laughs> Serral's like, no, 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 no. Don't worry about me. Just... Walking my overlord. Okay. Zerkling's here at the front. Do poke. But the depot, of course, is not going to be up. Alright. Now, what Serral would like to see here is whether or not there's any add-ons. Whether or not there's any add-ons here on the starport. But I guess he's already seen that the factory was producing the reactor and the starport didn't move. So just by seeing the edge of the starport, yep, he's figured out, okay, this has to be a flying unit right now. And it turns out... It's a Liberator. Much like sentries do, Liberators also tickle. <laughs> this is the least epic battle in all of StarCraft 2. It really is like watching a sentry trying to kill an Overlord. Anyways, eventually, it will go across the map and it'll start harassing, but up to this point... <sighs> I don't know. My main concern, right, with these sort of builds is that once Zerg players figured them out, and I think that's already happened, you're leaving guys like Serral completely unbothered for like, really like, six minutes or so of in-game time. I mean, there's some Reaper play, yeah, there's a Liberator, sure, there's a couple of Hellions, sure, but... In the end, really, this is, this is something you can figure out and you can measure, and then... Once you know the counter, once you know exactly how many Zerklings you need to make, all of your other efforts can just be spent on trying to deal as much damage economically to your opponent as possible. So, you just make a whole, a whole lot of drones. So already we're sitting at four bases here for Zerg, just about to finish up. 62 workers. It's not like the Terran economy is bad or whatever, but I don't know. The creep threat gets under, uh, yeah, it gets out of control very quickly. It gets underway very early here, and it just doesn't feel like that great of a strat. All right, well, here's the first meta effect drop. Zerglings did not see it coming, but they're very fast. There's a lot of creep around. Queens are already ready to try and intercept this. A couple of links on the other side of the map as well, sniping SCVs. And 
That's done more damage than this entire opener from Cure. Hellions here though, okay, do actually roast a couple drones, I just barely missed that. A little surprised actually that that even happened, because the creep spread is so far out that Sarah must have seen it coming in for like five seconds before he actually pulled the drones, or at least he could have seen it. Maybe pro gamers need to uh, infest into like uh, chameleon eyes, you know? Like those animals that can rotate their eyes individually, so they can have like one eye rotated on the minimap the entire time. <laughs> we need the Cyborg Championships, okay? The 2030 StarCraft II Cyborg Championships, where half the competitors have a third arm, and the other guys have like uh, extra eyes that they can just maneuver on the minimap the entire time. Very helpful stuff. No limitations. No limits at all. You can do whatever you like. All right, this is good though here, by Cure. Forcing the drones away, target firing down the spawning pool. I don't think it's gonna fall just yet, but there's a good chance he will be coming back later. He's gonna try and start up this double pronged aggression, right? That Cure is very good at. He does this all the time in Terran versus Protals too, and it creates a lot of chaos. The thing is though, this creep is already so far out, that it's gonna be hard to really catch the opponent off guard. So I actually really like this conservative siege here. Yeah, just dance on the edge of the creep, just get the hatchery and then get on out of there. I think that's the right move, although I think he might be overstaying a little bit. Yep, no, he should have gotten out of there. Okay, that's the siege tank going down. Bailing speed, not done yet. Nice, a little bit of target firing here by Cure. Okay, lovely work in the end, but I think he should have just unsieged and flown away. Plus two, plus two. Basically even. Very small advantage right there for the Zerg. Sarah only sitting at 69 workers, 68 right now. Not as nice. Hatchery coming up over here. Empty medevac in the top left and corner, trying to be annoying. All right, so we're gonna go into eight barracks. This is usually a style we see only in two situations. Either it's when the Terran is feeling really confident and they don't really want the game to go to distance, so they're like, okay, I'm gonna eight rex you and I'll just make a stupid amount of stuff. Or whenever Terran players feel a little bit desperate, this is the classic, I'm gonna fall back to my, you know, good old all-in strat. This is a very common build on the ladder, so it's triple, Command center into eight barracks. Very powerful stuff because you can make so many units. And if you've done any sort of tempo damage throughout the course of the game, so you kill a bunch of creep and all that, it's very powerful. Although I really, no, that is not it, man. It, it isn't bad. Like none of these traits are terrible, but when you're going for an all-in, losing units like half a minute before the all-in gets underway is really, really in favor of the opponent here. Because Cure really needs to lie on those upgrades, right? He really needs to make sure that the Siege Tank... Rely, not lie on those upgrades. He needs to rely on these upgrades. Make sure that he gets the Siege Tank lines going and all that. But at this point, we've... Yeah, we've seen three Siege Tanks going down. He's only got two available at this point. Yeah, he, he decides to fire up a 4th CC, because I think he's with me. He's like, yeah, I, I can't really win this if I go for an all-out attack right now. I mean, I'd have to start clearing creeps so close to home, I... Don't have the scans for that available, I don't really have the army, and I'm gonna give my opponent way too much time. Okay, so, Hive starts up here for Serral. I think he's reading this situation like a book so far. One nice thing here for Cure, the silver lining, is that that Hive is pretty late, and he can fire up 3-3 right away. I really would love to see Cure rely on that again. Forced to pick up, get on out of there, but I really would love to see 3-3 start up, like, right now. I mean, he doesn't have the money for it right now, but like, as, as soon as he's got the money. Because I feel like that's the, the, the really big advantage that he's got in this game. I mean, supply-wise, he's still good, don't get me wrong, but he doesn't have... He doesn't have a fourth base. I mean, it's, it's finishing right now, but it's very late. He doesn't have a, a ghost transition ready to go. He doesn't really have anything too impressive. The only thing he's really got is upgrades, and he's letting it slide. Maybe that's though, because he just wants to produce army here. And that fourth base, but now he, he's kind of like half committed to this attack because he made a fourth command center. Could have been maxed out now. Okay. Zerg already setting up a massive surround though. Look at that minimap. This is a Zerg army ready to collapse on top of it. And when is he gonna pull the trigger? Okay, pulling the trigger on some of those units. But I think Serral is just gonna attack move in the middle of this clump. And that's exactly what he decides to do right now. Units coming in from every single angle. There's still a little bit of an army over here that apparently was forgotten. That fight actually didn't go as cleanly because of it. I think that... Okay. This is where the old army hotkey would have been really nice. Serral instead decides to give up that base. Liberator over here has killed 12 drones. Okay. 
That was a blunder right there from Serral. Probably not quite realizing. Yeah, this this must be him shaking his head as well. Probably not quite realizing that he'd already set up a lot more units there up north. Maybe assuming they were on the control group. Now they're going to be running on over towards the southern section of this map, though. Hatchery over here end up, uh, yeah, will end up going down. Maybe the third is going to be in some trouble, too. Or I guess that was the old fourth base. Regardless, a couple SCVs here have gone down. Maybe a little bit more than a couple. Okay. This actually now became a very close match. Uh, okay. <laughs> Whew, it would have been less close if... All of those SCVs just fell. We do have a, bar a bunch of burrowed Zerklings over here. Imagine if those were burrowed beans right now. Certainly would have been possible. Still, a lot of Zerg reinforcements are available, but I think Sarah could have cleaned up that army with ease if he just used the old army hotkey. Anyways. These units are going to have to pick up, get on out of there. Queen's still trying to you know, chase this to the best of their abilities. Hive is done. Okay, so this game actually goes on. Lovely work. Kira needed to pull a rabbit out of a hat, and I think he's probably a little surprised himself as well, but he's still in this. He now has got himself a fourth command center done. Planetary Fortress is built on top of it. The creep spread is still everywhere, but this is the first time in a very long time that he actually pulled the supply advantage. Now, he's only sitting at 44 SCVs. He's also not opted to remake any workers. So I think what Kira's plan is, is to go for one big assault. Again, something that would have really benefited from plus three at the very least the plus three weapons he's got a lot of gas could certainly pull off gas and move those scvs down south scvs though at this point okay in a little bit of trouble forcing the scan here are those zerklings all right things are a little dicey here for Serral, but he's got vipers up in the air plus he's got adrenal glands coming as well and that one's almost finished the adrenal glands upgrade is about a 40 percent attack speed uh buff for the links Absolutely massive. But Serral also not opting to go for the plus three melee just yet. Probably because he is a little concerned about this game. Sensor tower here is definitely going to go down. Alright. Cure is ready to put all of his eggs in one basket once again. And I like this. All in into all in. Oftentimes not a bad choice. This is a position that is very tricky for the Zerg player to break. Queen's over here, though. A lot of transfusion energy available. Is he gonna pull the trigger once again? This time around, we do have the all army hotkey activated. Everything goes on over in this direction. We do also have some blinding clouds shutting down the siege tanks. All right, Liberator's up in the air, trying to get as many kills as possible, but most of their targets are Zerklings. Uh, they certainly did get a bunch of kills there, but nothing really to write home about. The hatchery lives. Adrenal Glance is done. Armor upgrades, melee upgrades right now coming up. Still, Kira's got a nice amount of stuff here. He's not really setting himself up for success, though, I feel like. I don't know. Like, he's setting himself up for survival, and sometimes that's all it takes in a, in a game of StarCraft 2. So it's nice when your opponent makes a mistake, like the one that we saw on the left side of the map earlier, but... By not making any SCVs, by not making any additional upgrades, he's not really allowing himself any longevity in this game, but he's also not really going in for... The killer move, if that makes sense, right? Like, going for the side base here, maybe he was just trying to bait an overextension out of the opponent, which is fair enough, but... It is certainly a little bit risky. Ultra Cavern, once again, coming up here for Serral. If he finishes 3-3, I don't think Kier can really contest with him. At this point, though, this is still a lot. They have Planetary over there, first time that Serral sees it. Nice spread right here on all of those units. But he doesn't have scans available to go for this, uh, well, snipes on the creep tumor. So once again, yep, we're gonna just pull as many of these units away. Blinding cloud over there as well on that siege tank. We have units right now in running from the left. I think they probably could have joined the fray a little bit quicker, but that was mostly just trying to make sure that this army doesn't grow for too much longer. The SCVs have been evacuated from the third location. They're now mining at the bottom base instead. This is uh, Cure's final stand. And supplies wise, he, supply wise, he's still looking strong. He's got a lot of units available. 95 versus 94 army supply, but this fight will now take place on creep. Is Sero going to pull the trigger before 3-3 is done? I mean, that's still a while away. Okay. I like this decision making here from Cure a lot more. Rather than going for that base on the right side, I don't think that was ideal. This is a whole lot better, because if he kills this base, he can march straight to the natural. 
Okay, are we gonna pull the trigger once again? Exactly what we do. Blinding clouds do go down. At least one siege tank gets disabled for a little while. Queens in the meantime stepping forward as well, trying to deal as much damage. Cure, yeah, still some nice spreadies right there off creep. For this next attack now, these upgrades are gonna finish up, and that is a big buff to these Zerklings and Banelings. It's gonna deal uh, significantly more damage, they're gonna take significantly less damage as well. Obviously the attack speed improvement from Adrenal Glance is noticeable too now. Melee attacks, a little bit behind, but the armor already is handy. Those Vipers are being used very effectively as well. Yeah, Valiant Effort right here by Cure. Oh no. <laughs> Oh no, that medevac! Okay, it flew back in after being spread from the rest. GG is cold though. It's gonna be Serral who obtains the victory in this best of three. So, that previous series, it was a best of three. It was played during the World Team League. It turns out though that later that same day, these guys played another best of one for the same tournament. So we find ourselves on altitude. And apparently Cure is not too keen to play another... Well, standard macro game against Serral as he starts off this game, okay, by sending two SCVs straight across the map. Let's see, this is the largest map in the StarCraft 2 map pool. I would not be surprised at all if this is Serral's map pick. Generally speaking, this is one of the vetoes from Terrans just because the map is very large and they, in general, are, you know, the bases, they are very spread out and it's difficult to expand on. Zerk has a lot of angles to move in and you know, obviously the bases are far apart as well from natural to natural, so it just simply takes longer for units to march across the map. And that usually seems to benefit macro zerks. Now, even a third SCV was sent across. Okay, so a triple Rex proxy right here from Cure. Is that going to help out? Is that going to make this a bit easier? Judging here by the overlords? Yeah, Serral is not going to find out exactly what's going on. So, the crisis management here from the finisher is gonna have to be on point. He's decided to go for a hatch first, into a gas geyser, into a spawning pool, so he will be able to get zerking speed and all the rest of this going eventually, but this is by no means a early game unit opener, right? Like, he's gonna be able to make some stuff here very soon, but his drone micro is gonna have to be on point. Drones will have to be pulled towards the low ground, because otherwise he's gonna be in a world of hurt. Okay. So this will be the first time that Serral sees it. All right, crisis starts right now. What exactly are we gonna do? One drone is going down towards the low ground. I believe the magic number is 13 drones. Free coaching for you, you're welcome. Uh, I think 13 drones is the number that you want against this sort of shenanigans. I believe it was Raynor who mentioned that against me years and years and years ago. I think it was Raynor anyways, at a home story cup one day. Anyways, uh, you wanna make sure that you dance here for a little while. You do want to engage, and you do want to make sure that this bunker does not finish. The drones have been pulled off gas. Okay, nice snipe right there on one of the marines. The drones have been pulled off gas. And so far, this is looking pretty stellar here for Serral. I mean, three drones is not ideal. Losing a fourth would kind of suck, but two SCVs have already gone down. Bunker does eventually finish. But so does that spine crawler. Okay, yeah, so six drones. For three SCVs, Bunker is done. Cure is gonna continue the aggression for a little bit longer, but I feel like this has mostly been held. At the very least, the first phase of this particular attack, it's been held, right? This is where most Zerg players would have already lost the game. Notice here that the Queen, by the way, did not go for an injection. So she's got energy saved up for a transfuse. That is by design. Although he's not using it. Okay. Yeah, so Cure is still going to continue onwards with the marine production for a little while longer. I think his plan is to try and jump this low HP spine crawler and finish it all off. Sorrow is mining gas once again, so metabolic boost will probably finish here at some point. Okay, here we go. A lovely bait with the transfusion, actually. That is really... Okay, that's really neat. I was wondering if you had forgotten, but no. So I was like, yo, jump my spine crawler. I dare you. It's going to cost you two marines, minimum. All right. Second spine coming up as well. Still, these marines are, yeah, pecking a punch. Two more queens have now popped, or one in the main base, second one over here is now popping on the low ground. I think this is gonna fully hold this, right? Yeah, I think this low HP queen probably needs to go back into the main base to start injecting over there, or at the very least it needs to, 
Or you know, got a spine now. Or you got a council of spine here. I actually don't know if that was ideal, to be honest. So dangerous with that low HP queen. The counseling the spine also seems a bit crazy to me. I don't recommend you counsel your own spines, but I think it's about time for Cure to make every Terran's worst feeling decision. And that is to make the flight of shame. Yeah. The flight of shame is coming up. I think Cure is gonna have to lift and get on out of there here. Although apparently he disagrees. He did start up a command center here eventually. Double gas right now coming up as well. But timing wise, of course, Cure is now in a pretty tricky spot. I mean, if he wants to go for any sort of follow up attack, I think he needs to have Stimpak. I was gonna say, you could technically produce it out here in the middle of the map. But that would be very dangerous. So here's the flight of shame. Two of the barracks apparently have to consider their sins for a little bit. There we go. They need the commanding officer barracks. Fair enough. Okay. So Cure is now going to just follow this up with triple command center. Factory coming up as well. And I guess we're now playing a bit of a macro-ish game. Still a lot of marines out, by the way. Sniping these links would be really nice. Okay. Nice work right there by Cure. Love to see that. I don't hate this start here from Cure, but I also don't love it. Yeah, now the follow-up is going to be so tricky here for him. There are more Marines popping out of the main base. Okay, fair enough. But these links now with speed are going to have a grand old time. They do decide to return here towards the creep, or at least in the direction of the creep, in just a second. So that's nice and all. But this is now Kyoro who's up with his back against the wall for the foreseeable future. But he set himself up for that as well, right? With the third command center, once it morphs in an orbital command, I do think there's a chance for him to, yeah, get a solid economy out and get the, uh, get the advantage going as well. This does mean, though, that for the next couple minutes, Serral is left to his own. And what exactly is Zerg going to do? Well, a couple options. You could go for an all-in, right? For example, a Roach-based push, a Link Bane bust, whatever you like. Or, you can play macro. I think Serral will be opting for that second option basically every single time. Third hatchery coming up right now. I think he is just gonna hold down the drone button and try to face this Terran player and economy head on. A lot of gases here taken all at once, by the way, for Cure. We're uh, gonna have to keep an eye out on exactly what he decides to do with that. Might just be for upgrades here, though. He had the double engineering bay done for a little while already, but he hasn't actually started any upgrades yet. So I guess that's what we're going to be spending our next set of gas on. Yeah. After the combat shields and the stim pack, I guess it makes a lot of sense. So he does have a nice uh, a nice timing attack lined up here as soon as all of those upgrades are done. Although we do start it right now though, please. Hello. Okay. In the meantime, you blink twice and the creep is halfway across. Bit of an exaggeration there, but... These tumors are not going to stop spreading anytime soon, and Serral is going to have an awful lot of creep when that attack for the Terran player is ready to go. Lara started up, fourth hatchery coming up. We'll see Baneling speed here as well in a little bit. Fair enough. Maybe he can start clearing out some of those creep tumors, but if he doesn't begin soon, the creep will be knocking over at his third base in a minute or two. There's the Evolution Chambers as well for Serral. But you know what? This is actually a good a good game right here for Cure, I believe. Like, the creep is kind of tricky. He doesn't really have that tempo advantage. But macro-wise, he's just fine. Army-wise, economy-wise, he's in a good spot. Upgrade-wise, he's also at a nice little lead. Still, the next fights are basically all gonna have to be on creep. Because that creep is looking absolutely ludicrous. Yeah, this is what happens when you don't just have 400 plus average actions per minute, but you're also using it effectively. There's a lot of potential. Alright, a little bit of a Widow Mine drop, at least he's thinking about it. I think those are the first Widow Mines we actually see in this particular match. Serral sees them around the same time as I do. <laughs> as he now flies an Overseer through his opponent's main base. Armory coming up. That's in line with the 2-2 research. Bailing speed is gonna finish. Okay, we do have the 1-1 here, about a quarter of the way done. 
And we've got the Nematized Carapace upgrades coming up already too. That's the Overlord Speed upgrade. We'll have to see what Serral decides to do with that. Might just be for some, uh, some Overseer scouting here. Just to get that Overseer out of there. It's a nice upgrade to have regardless. Cure is once again fishing here, right? Like this is him fishing with Widow Mines. He's hoping that he's gonna catch 30 Zerklings. Serral has seen though that this is Widow Mine play, so I don't think he should be catching the bait. Or he should be taking the bait rather. You shouldn't catch it either, for what it's worth. But Cure is trying his best here. And you know what? He may very well get a nice hit. Nope, he doesn't. Perfect splits right there by the finisher. The next move here apparently already pre-planned in advance. Lings are patrolling the main base. <laughs> Sarah's looking insane, guys. I, I can't make this. I can't make this cast any any you know any any better than it is. I'm trying my best here to find the silver linings, but Sarah is looking very dominant. Cure is in a good spot here, don't get me wrong, but I feel like just the sheer, the sheer rigidity, I guess, in Serral's playstyle. He seems incredibly comfortable. It's, it's like you're playing chess, right? And your opponent is thinking two moves ahead, but you're already thinking seven moves ahead, right? Like, that's kind of what it feels. Um, or that's kind of what it feels like here, where Cure is, yeah, he's thinking ahead. He's in a good position. He set up the board nice and tightly. But it feels like he is playing against somebody who is just strategically a few steps ahead of him. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe this game will go in his favor. Like, he's got all of the tools at his disposal. Serral is looking pretty dangerous, though. Yeah. His major mistake in this game so far, or in this series, I guess, or in the previous one, technically, is not hitting the all-army hotkey. Right? On that fight on the, the left side of uh, game number two. That's something that would have never happened to me, I can tell you that much! Oh no. I use the old army hotkey a little bit too liberally. To the point where it hurts me, actively, in all my games. But I would have hit that engagement like a truck. I'll <laughs> it would have been a sledgehammer move. Yeah, the fact that that army at the bottom didn't move in did make the game needlessly complex. 2-2 is finishing up right now for Cure. Trying his very best. Clearing out a lot of creep on the left side of the map. Yes, he's lost part of his drop here on the right, but, I mean, those units are pretty easy to replace at this point in the game. Not bad at all. Drop in the main base, once again, gets shut down. But he does have a fourth command center. Serral sees this right away. Planetary Fortress is coming up. Serral was waiting with the changeling. Like, judging by the timing here of how long that changeling has been around for, he was here before the command center landed. So he's like, bro, you're meant to have a command center here. Ah, there it is. 30 seconds later than it was supposed to be. You see you see what I mean? It's the little things, man. Anyways, no, 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 don't lose the Metavex. Ooh, okay. Luckily here for the Terran, the Hydralisks do not have their ranged upgrade yet. So Garouf Spines is gonna finish up in just a moment. That's the Hydra ranged upgrade is gonna make them quite a bit faster to control here and quite a bit easier to micro. This is still a scary Terran army, though, but Serral apparently is ready to fight this off creep. That Widow Mine detonation was not bad. Plus two Carapace here finishing up for the ground units. Okay, we're gonna start working on the Golden Minerals here, too, on altitude. You gotta knock down the Watchtower rocks first, so these rocks, they collapse on top of the Watchtower, and then you kill the rocks that are, you know, laying on top of it. You kill your own creep tumor, apparently, that may be blocking, and then eventually <laughs> you, <can laughs> you start up the hatch. Plus two, plus two started up as well for the Zerg here. He's already finished up the plus two carapace, but he started up a Hydra research. Fight over here on the left side. Okay. Cure now maxed out. Serral now also maxed out. Ghost Academy is coming up. Okay. You know what? This is looking a lot more competitive here. Fifth command center, Ghost Academy, 3-3 three, three research. This is what we want to see. Now Cure will be playing Serral in the late game. But... In the previous two matches we saw, he never really got there. And his late game play is very stellar. Serral not really set up yet for late game play. He's a little bit behind as far as tech goes. So he's going into a hive right now. I'm expecting to see a lurker then here in a moment, maybe a couple vipers, adrenal glands and 3-3 research, but he doesn't have the money for all of that at this point yet. He's at 79 workers, which is nice, but not quite the 85 to 90 or so that we want to see at this point for the Zerg. Instead, though, he decides to go for a big engagement. Massive Widow Mine hit. 
Lovely work right there by Kira, retargeting that one to try and get as much value out of it as possible. Reinforcing Terra units are stimming down the natural ramp, but I think this is an overextension right now for Serral, and he agrees. He decides to go back home. Luckily for him, the creep is right here, so... Yeah, he can just get that speed boost here right from the get-go. This is Cure's time to shine, though. Plus three infantry weapons has completed. Plus three infantry armor is gonna finish up. Careful now, okay. That Widow Mine betrayed some of that Terran army. That Widow Mine helped out a little bit more. I think this is the moment, though, where you can start thinking about at least clearing out some of the creep and maybe taking down a hatchery or two. Still, a lot of Zerg reinforcements are showing up, and I feel like we've been seeing too many random bailings on top of marine clumps. I know it's difficult, but we really can't be seeing that. Yeah, Cure is gonna get pushed back here, it seems. Reinforcing Zerg units just barely enough. Well, he's gonna try again. Like, we're denching on the edge. Okay, now he might be getting this hatchery after all. If you can get this hatchery, I would like this. I think I would like this for him. Overall, these fights have been going his way slowly but surely. Adrenal glands has started up, but there we go. Hatchery falls. Okay. Marauders in the front trying to soak up as many Baneling hits as possible. When there's no more Banelings remaining, lovely work. Cure can snipe the hatchery once again and go after the Hydralisks as well. Those Hydras are the unit that Serral doesn't really want to lose. Better back. Yeah, the Viper's now showing up as well. All right, I think that's the nil in the coffin for this particular attack. In the meantime, though, we did have a, a bit of a zirkling run by here in the top left-hand corner. But what Serral was not hoping for yet was that there was going to be a planetary fortress. Cure is establishing himself out on the map. He's now got five base economy. He's going into Ghost. He's going into Liberators. Marine Marauder coming up. He's got a sensor tower here building. He would need another sensor tower over here as well somewhere. I think that would be really nice. But he's found himself in a much better position now than... Yeah, where he was earlier. Big scan over here would be nice. Can we get that? Nice scan. A really good scan, although, yeah, it took him a while, so... Now the Zerg player is gonna move on over in this direction. Ends up paying the price. Good scan, though. <laughs> Alright, ghosts are out. And this ghost transition... is gonna make it difficult for Serral to make a transition towards anything else. If he wants to go... Lurkers, Ultras... Brute Lords, Vipers, Infestors, right? All of those units, the Ghost is really good against. Then again, Hydraling Bane is excellent against Ghost Marine Marauder. So as long as you have the economy, it should be okay. Serral doesn't really have that many drones, but he does have the Golden Minerals right now acquired once again. Cure at this point, though? Yeah, finding himself with a nice income advantage. Okay. Good work right here by Cure. Infestors are coming up. Fungal growth, obviously, still lethal. Neural parasites on the ghost, also always an option. There's the plus three melee. Terran's already finished that. I wonder if Cure is gonna start up a transition towards ghost mech as well. That's always an option. So far, he doesn't really have that just yet. But for all intents and purposes, right now, he's maxed out. He's ready to go for a fight. Okay, this is a fight that's taking a place on the edge of the creep here. Yeah, I was gonna say. I don't think that's really where the Zerg player wants to be fighting this. The problem is the creep is needed further forward here. Nice detonation right over there. In order for the Zerg player to hold on to these bases over here, he needs to hold on to this position. So these creep tumors over here are absolutely critical. Infester, Miss Rally, good EMP. It's gonna scurry back onto the creep. Zeral needs to get an overwhelming victory against this. Yeah, he's gonna try that right now. So what he's gonna do is just shove all of his units off creep. Always very dangerous. Parasitic bombs, though, are forcing the Terran's attention away from microing their main army. Widowmines at this point in very small numbers, actually. I think uh, essentially all of them have gone down. All right, Zeral does secure this area, but only for a little bit. Yeah, 37 Widowmines have gone down, actually. That's a lot. Another command center, though, is gonna fly on over towards the left side of the map. I wouldn't mind seeing some Liberator harassment on the other side, maybe a Medifact drop or two. I think that would be really nice to try and pull Serral's attention away from this side of the map. Because, again, he needs these two bases. Lurker, then, coming up here at the bottom of the map. 
This is the moment where, yeah, Cure has decided, you know what, I don't really need my ghosts anymore. I mean, it's nice to have a couple, I guess, in case my opponent decides to get greedy, but... Sarah has already killed quite a few ghosts, and the ghosts haven't really achieved that much. So he's actually sort of transitioning away from them a little bit. Factory number three, coming up. Blue Flame, being researched. The plus one ground weapons as well for Terran Mech, also now researching here for Cure. So Cure is ultimately making the transition from the bio base army into Terran Mech. This is a tricky transition, especially on a map like this, where you need to cover a lot of terrain. It's much easier on like a Neo Humanity or for example a Gresven, because it slows down the game a lot and it means that Serral gets to do whatever he likes for the foreseeable future. I mean, maybe there's gonna be some harassment, but I think Cure ultimately wants to replace any lost units here with, well, higher tier units, right? Like for example, Siege Tanks and maybe some, uh, some Thors eventually. We'll see, yeah, there's more factories coming up. He's just going for Ghost for now. He needs a bit of a Ghost backbone. So only two Ghosts here and not quite ideal. We need a little bit more than that. Serral in the meantime now going into the Lurker upgrades too. So notice how Zerks are not really rushing out Lurkers anymore in this matchup. For the longest time, for like a year or so, we saw the Lurkers being rushed out as quickly as possible, but... No longer really the case. There's the Command Center explosion as well. That is a critical part of this transition here towards the ultimate late game. Cure is gonna try and go for a Death Bowl. Yeah, so four CCs, high sec auto tracking, building armor, and mech upgrades. Second armory as well. He is ready to slow this game down for at least another 10-15 minutes or so. The idea is that you mine out your side of the map and you try your very best to just create an army that is unstoppable for the Zerg. This is still a while away though. The Cure does have a bit of money in the bank, but not quite as much as Serral did. That's mostly because he's investing into so much infrastructure. Okay, once again, this is apparently the Zerg player ready to move off creep. They're now essentially next door neighbors with a planetary fortress here acquired on the high ground, and that's exactly why Serral is pushing in so deep. This fight over here is not good for the Terran at all. Yeah, he's caught halfway in a transition here. There's the reinforcement showing up. Fungal growth! Okay, not yet. Because apparently the infester... Oh, ooh. <laughs> the infester is burrowed underground. Okay, a couple of ghosts showing up as well. Serral wants to set himself up for success. Okay, here we go. I think this is ready now. Yep, fungal! Massive fungal on top of those marines and ghosts. Serral absolutely plows through that army. Now he catches the SCV transfer too. Oh no. Yeah, they, you, you give this man an inch, right? And it takes the mile. It's not a lot of mistakes you can make. Now the planetary fortress here is gonna go down, and the entire left side of the map has been cleaned up. Cure does have all those command centers, but... Okay, not a lot of energy on them yet. This is not where Cure wanted to be. It's blocked. Zerkling underneath as well. Okay. Where is that ghost transition though? Where's that ghost mech transition? Finally, right now, do we have some Hellbeds walking around? But I feel like we saw factory number three, like five minutes ago. And this is the first time that I, I see a couple of those bad boys wandering the map. Okay. Is he really gonna push in once again though? It's not that many tanks. Yeah, there's eight siege tanks in total, but they're not over here. We're gonna be abducting these units to the best of our abilities and rolling the Banelings on forward as well. Planetary Fortress not on this high ground, instead it's gonna be an orbital? Alright, I think a Planetary here would have been really nice, but maybe he's scared of like a Lurker transition. Serral following this up with 58 additional links. Burrows one underneath that command center. He's now taking one of the bases as well on the right side of the map. This is a pretty oppressive series, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it really is. An alternative strategy that Cure could have played was to go for that Liberator style that we've been seeing a lot more lately, where you go for the additional starports. I quite like it on maps like this, because it's a lot more mobile. Like, the problem with Ghost Mech is that it's so freaking slow. Like, getting those units in multiple locations at once is really difficult. You need to line up your bases properly. I don't think an orbital command in this location is very smart either, to be honest. That's gonna be a lot more additional SCVs going down. On top of that, it looks like this entire Terran army is just getting overrun. 
Command center over here flying who knows where. Nine SCVs once again go down. Cure decides to rip off the Band-Aid as Serral absolutely walked all over him today. 